Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start. And if more people come in, they can get caught up. But I just wanted to talk really quick, give a couple of updates because we have a lot going on with um, uh, our upcoming dates and everything. So I'm actually gonna screen share. I have too many things open. There it is. Okay. So, here we go. First thing is our schedule. Um, and I'm only going over this because actually we have so much coming up um, in the next couple of days. We just finished our Thanksgiving break which was amazing. Um, but we have only a couple more days before our next test, which is actually gonna be on the 9th and 10th. So today's class and the one after that are it for this unit. It is a really short unit. Um, and then also our extra credit projects is going to be due um, on the day of your nine weeks test. So those are some dates that I just want to make sure we're, we're all clear on just because after that it's finals and then we're going to be on break once again, which is going to be really nice. Um, I did have some students turn in extra credit already, but just a quick reminder that looks like... Mm, here we go. So here we go, the extra credit you can find right here. It says extra credit labs. And this has all the instructions. You can pick any lab that you want and complete it. Some of them are fun. Actually, a lot of them are fun. One student already did five. So that's 50 extra points added to the major grade category just for doing something like making a volcano. Once you complete the lab, then you can submit it by going to this little Flipgrid link. Um, some students were turning them in accidentally to my email, but I'm wanting them on the Flipgrid. This student already did three and posted them in one video. So that's the extra credit lab. Very easy, very easy. Um, and then the other thing I want to talk to you all about is to make sure that we're um, following the final exam schedule. Um, the administration wants us to tell the remote students they need to complete their exams on the schedule that they're supposed to be following at school. So that means if you are in my fourth period Maya, I can't remember off the top of my head which class you're in. I feel like I can't remember. But let's just say you're in fourth period. Um, you're supposed to complete your exam on Wednesday the 16th. Um, and they are saying that we're supposed to give you zeros if you don't do it on your assigned day. So I just want to make sure everybody knew about that. It's all coming up really soon. Okay. Now that all that stuff's out of the way, let's talk about our homework. Let's do some of our problems, some balancing homework. Okay, so I'm gonna get in here and get started so we can do some of these. So balancing. It's actually not that bad. First thing it says to do is to classify. So we're gonna use these letters, single, 
uh, or synthesis, sorry, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, combustion, and then balance. So the first thing you want to do is like what we did right before the break. It seems like a million years ago, but we want to first look at this and figure out what's going on. So I see sodium and then I see magnesium bonded to fluorine. Okay, so if I look at the after, we notice now magnesium is all alone. That magnesium is all alone. So that makes me think, okay, it's not a double replacement, it's a single replacement. Because in a single replacement, someone's always gonna be left alone. In this case, it's magnesium. The next thing we're gonna do is just count. Um, we did, I showed y'all in the lesson video, the different methods that you could use the ping pong method, guess and check, build a little table. I personally like the guess and check because I can look at most of them pretty easily and figure out what's going on. So I'm gonna look on the left side. I see one sodium. I look on the right side. I also see one sodium. So that one, I don't need to adjust. Now I'm gonna look at the magnesium. On the left side, I see one. On the right side, I see one. Okay, no problem so far. But check out this fluorine. Uh, that fluorine, there is only one of them. And so in order to balance, or there's one of them on the right side, but there's two of them over here. So in order to balance that, I need to change the coefficient in front of the other fluorine. You can't write in subscripts. It'd be really easy if you could just do that, but you can't do that. Nope. The only thing you can ever change when you balance are coefficients. So that means a big number. So in order to make the other side, the right side, equal the left, I need to just put a coefficient up too. This had unintended consequences though, because now I also have two sodiums because coefficients go to everything. So I can fix this really easily though by putting in another coefficient. All right, now I wanna just do one final check and make sure nothing else is um, out of balance. So I've got on the left, two sodiums. On the right, I also have two sodiums. On the left side, I have one magnesium. And on the right side, I have one. So I'm gonna put in that coefficient of one. And I know that it's weird putting in coefficients of one because with everything else in chemistry, we've told you, oh, it's, it's a one, it's understood to be there. But this is an exception to that. We actually do need you to put in one a coefficients every single time. So coefficients have to be in the balanced equation. We've got two fluorines on the left and we've got two on the right. So that is balanced. So I find this method much easier than drawing the table every single time, but maybe you like drawing the tables or you just wanna see another method. So I'll draw the other method. Okay, so the other method is basically like, you can draw a little line and then list out everything you have. I'm gonna write down Mg, H, and Cl. Oh, first of all, I need to kind of look at this and figure out what's going on here. So I've got magnesium um, by itself and then um, hydrogen bonded to chlorine. But then when I go to the other side of the reaction, that hydrogen's been kicked out. It's another single replacement reaction. We know that because hydrogen's all alone. Okay, so now I'm gonna use this table method and basically you just list out how much of each thing you have on the left and right, and then figure out how to make them equal. So magnesium on the left, I've got one. Hydrogens on the left side, I have one. Chlorines on the left side, I have one. Magnesium on the right side, I have one. Hydrogens, I've got two. And chlorines, I have two. Now, what I'm looking at, the only one that's balanced so far is just the magnesium. So I need to fix this with coefficients. I'm gonna need a coefficient for this one, the hydrogen, and a 
coefficient for the chlorine. So I'm going to put a 2 there. And because coefficients go to both, now they're both 2. So I'm going to update that total to 2. This did not affect my magnesium, so I can go ahead and put in a 1. Now I'm all balanced. So I'm going to just update my totals and then put in my coefficients. We do need coefficients of 1. I don't know why it's necessary to do that when it's understood everywhere else. But I don't make the rules, I just follow them. Okay, so I don't know if you find the table method easier. I personally think it takes, it kind of confuses me more, but everybody is different. So maybe you might. Yes, let's see. Denise, we're just uh, balancing, doing some balancing. All right, here we go. Back to our balancing. I'm going to start this next one. So we're on number three on our homework. If you just joined us, it's on the balancing and types of reactions. And this is... And that's on page three in the homework packet. So these will give you the answers to the quiz if you do them. Okay, I'm gonna do the next one. First thing we wanna do is look at it and think what's going on here. Okay, on the left side, I see chlorine plus a potassium bonded to an iodine. Um, on the other side, I see the potassium is no longer with the iodine. The iodine is now all by itself, been kicked out. Now the potassium and the chlorine are bonded together. So once again, this is a single replacement reaction. Single replacement. It's different than double replacement because in a single replacement, somebody's always going to be all by themselves. They've been kicked out. All right. Now that I've identified that, I'm going to balance. So remember in chemistry, we treat the arrow like it is an equal sign. That just means I want to be counting what I have on the left. I want to make sure I have the same number of them on the right. So I'll do the table method again. And on the next one, I'll do just the guess and check. So I'm going to write down everything. I've got chlorine here, potassium, and iodine. Chlorine, potassium, and iodine. So on the left side, I've got two chlorines. So I'm gonna write that in my little table. Um, I have only one chlorine on the right side. There's no subscripts. I'm gonna have to balance those later. I'm gonna finish writing everything out first. Okay, here we go. Potassium, on the left, I have one on the right. I only have one. So those are balanced so far. The iodines on the left side, I have one. On the right side, I have two. So these are not balanced. So I've got two places where the numbers are not the same. There are two chlorines over here, but there's only one over there. Two iodines, only one iodine. I fix this easily with coefficients though. It's not a big deal can't change subscripts. We can't change these little numbers. But we can really easily change the big numbers. So because there's two of them over here, all I have to do is stick a two right here. And now I have two potassiums, but I also changed my chlorines. So now I have two chlorines because coefficients go to everything. But actually that's okay because look, I needed two chlorines. So that actually helped me out. So now on the left and the right side, I have two chlorines. So I'm gonna put a coefficient of one right there. So got two on this side, I also have two on that side. Um, but now I also affected this potassium right here. I'm gonna change that easily again with a coefficient. I'm just gonna stick that coefficient right there. And now I have two uh, potassiums on the left and I have two on the right. 
but this also affected my iodine because coefficients go to everything they're next to. So now I have two iodines as well. But once again, I needed two iodines, so that actually helped me out. So I'm gonna put a one right there, and then we can do your final check, just to make sure everything on the left and the right is equal. So on the left side, I have two chlorines. On the right side, I also have two chlorines. On the left side, I have two potassiums. On the right side, I have two potassiums. On the left, I have two iodines. On the right, I have two. So my left and right sides are balanced. I'm all done. Is that making sense? Maybe, yes, hopefully. Okay, so let's do number four. Um, and feel free to like ask questions. If you have some, ask. Um, so I can answer them. Here's number four. All right, first thing we want to look at is figure out if it's a synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, or a combustion reaction. So unlike the last one, I do not see anything that's left totally alone. See how everybody's bonded with someone at the end? So it's not a single replacement reaction. This is actually a double replacement reaction. This is a double replacement. So I'm going to write in a DR for double replacement. And that's because they just traded partners. So first the calcium was bonded to the hydroxide and the aluminum was with the sulfate, but then they switched. Then the calcium got the sulfate and the aluminum is with the hydroxide. So that's all it is. They just switch whoever they're bonded to. Okay, now we're just gonna count. The nice thing about polyatomic ions is that you don't have to separate them out. That will be so much harder and so much more work I'm so glad we don't have to do that. We can just treat anything inside parentheses like this as if it's a single element. And so I don't have to say, I don't have to balance out the oxygens and the hydrogens. I can just treat them as, oh, I have two hydroxides, which is OH. I don't need to make it separate. I wish I could figure out how to make this a little more bright for y'all, but. Okay, so I'm gonna list them out. So on the left side, I've got my calciums, I have hydroxides, I have aluminum, and I have sulfate, SO4. And I just wanna put my total numbers of each. Okay, I've got one calcium on the left. I've got two hydroxides, because we, we do still wanna be counting this little two. So we have two hydroxides, but I don't have to say oxygens and hydrogen separately. Does that make sense? I can just count them as a group. Yes, hopefully yes. I've got two aluminums, because of this two right here. I like the table met method way better too. Um, we'll do the table, um, or I'm sorry, I like the guess and check method, but if you like the table method, I'll keep showing you the table method. So um, yeah, I'll keep going with that. Thank you, Maya. Okay, so over here, I've got two aluminums. And I don't want to break up my, my buddies, so I don't have to say, oh, there's 12 oxygens. No, I just get to treat it like a single unit. So I'm going to say there's three sulfates on the left side. Now let's look on the right side. Calcium, hydroxides, aluminums, and sulfates. Okay, so we only have one calcium again. I have only one SO4. I've got three OHs, that little three right there. And I have only one aluminum. 
So because this is not a combustion reaction, we can start wherever we want. We can start at any of them, really. I'm not gonna start with calcium since it's already balanced. I'm gonna start with the hydroxide because I've got two on the left side, but I have three of them over here. Now, this is not as hard as it seems. We just need to find um, just a common way to, to multiply them out so we can get them to be the same number. So we're gonna use like a common multiplier. Um, in this case, I'm gonna pick six because you can multiply two by three in order to get six. And you can also multiply three by two and um, get six on the other side. So remember, we're just trying to make each side equal, the left side and the right side. You want the same amount of um, your atoms on the left and the right. Doesn't mean the coefficients are gonna be the same, it just means the total number when we're counting them up, okay? So I am going to put a three as my coefficient right here. Now I have not two, but six OHs. And that's because three times two is equal to six. Now this had what we call our unintended consequences. Because coefficients go to everything, I've now changed my um, calcium as well. So now I have three calciums. That's okay, that happens. We're just gonna keep going and see what else we can do. And let's go continue on by balancing our other OH, right? Because we want this one to also be six. We want there to be six on each side. We can do this because three times two equals six. So if we put a coefficient of two right here, now we've got six OHs but we've also had an unintended consequence in that it messed up my aluminum. Before I had one aluminum, now I have two. But look, I wanted to because I have two on the left side. So that actually worked out for us. Sometimes that works out. Okay, so I'm gonna look at the next thing maybe that I want to fix. And I think I'm gonna go with the SO4s, the sulfates. Because over here we've got three and that is not equal to one. So on my side with only one, I am going to, once again, put a coefficient, in this case, a coefficient of three. That's because three times one is three. But once again, some unintended consequences because that three goes to everything. So it also goes to this calcium over here. So now I have three calciums, but that's okay. Cause look, I wanted it to be three. So now actually, I balance my calciums by doing that. And I have three SO4s. Three SO4s. And now I just kind of want to make sure everything is balanced. Okay, three and three, those numbers are the same. Six and six, that number is the same. Oh, I didn't even update this column and I need to remember because we have to write our coefficients. So I have that's a two, because one times two is two. So I've got two aluminums and I've got one times three, three sulfates. These numbers are now the same too, and the three and the three. So I'm balanced. It looks a lot harder than it is. Everyone gets intimidated because they're trying to also balance out the oxygens and the sulfurs and everything else by itself. But if you can remember that bodies stick together, polyatomic ions. If you see it inside a parenthesis, you treat it like a single thing. You don't have to break it up. Does that make sense? Okay. We're going to keep going. We'll probably finish this homework, so you'll be able to take your quiz right after this and get 100. All right, first thing we want to do is look at what we have. Um, because we need to classify. Don't want to forget about our top instructions, which say to classify. Okay, here we go. I'm going to classify this. I've got potassium, and I've got some chlorine, 
before and then at the end, after my reaction occurs, they come together. This is a synthesis reaction, an S, right? So now I'll write out a table since y'all seem to be liking the tables. Draw your little line and then just list out what you have. Sometimes it goes fast, like this one's really short. Okay. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna count now. I'm just gonna look, what do I have on the left side? What do I have on the right side? Let's count and see if they're equal. Potassium, I've got one over here. I've got two chlorines. Now I'm gonna go to the other side. I've got one on the right side and I only have one on the left. So I'm gonna fix that because two and one are not the same number and in order for a reaction to be balanced, they have to be equal. The amount on the left has to equal the amount on the right. Very easy to fix. I just need to pop in a coefficient. But since coefficients go to everything, I also now have two potassiums. Easy to fix though. Very simple. Just need to put a coefficient right there. And now I've got two on that side. I forgot a step. I got to put that one there. So sometimes it might ask you like on a test, um, what is the ratio of a balanced equation? And that's just looking for the numbers. So the answer, this question said, what is the ratio? And it had these blank ones of the balanced, um, uh, the balanced atoms or however it states. You would say it's in a ratio of two to one to two. So if it ever asks you about the ratio, it just wants you to write out the coefficients in the order that you wrote them down. Okay, we're going to turn to the next page. Okay. Do y'all want me to keep going or do you want me to skip ahead and go to the next part? No opinions. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to take your silences that you're, you're, you're wanting me to keep going. Okay. So first thing I want to do is classify. You take a look and think, okay, what happened here? I have some lead paired up with some sulfate. And we've got some potassium all by itself. And then potassium stole sulfate away from the lead. Just stole, stole that sulfate. Poor lead, all alone now. So this is a single replacement reaction. Okay. You recognize these always by knowing that one will always be all by itself in a single replacement. Okay, so I'm going to show you just really quick on this one. I know some of y'all like the table, but just for, for those of you who just joined us, I'm going to show you how you can also just do the, the guess and check because some students find the table confusing. So I'm just going to show you that method really quick on this problem, then we'll go back to the table on the other one. Okay, so for the guess and check, you're just basically kind of look at what you have. Okay, I've got one lead on this side, I've got one lead on that side. All right, now I'm going to change anything. I've got one sulfate on the left, got one sulfate on the right. I don't need to change that. I've got one potassium on the left, but I have two on the right. Okay, I need to make a change here. I'm going to put a coefficient of two. So now I can, I can be confident that there's a potassium. There are two potassiums on the left, and there are also two on the right. Actually, in this problem, everything else is balanced. Once again, though, it is really important to write out a coefficient of one. Unlike everything else that we've done this year where I say, oh, you don't really need to write out a one, it's understood. In this case, it is not understood. So a coefficient of one is required. So everything is equal now. 
it's balanced. It's in a one to two to one to one ratio. Okay, let's keep going. So on this one, I'll go back to the table method. So for the table method, you just write out your products on each side. Why did I write a three there? It should be an I. Okay, so first thing I wanna do is, once again, I'm gonna classify it just like the other one. This is a single replacement reaction. That is because this hydrogen here was left all alone. The um, hydrogen was originally paired with that nitrogen and it got kicked out by the iodine. So this is a single replacement. There's been a lot of single replacements on this worksheet. I'm not sure why. Single replacements. And now we're gonna count. We're gonna use our table and count. Okay, I'm gonna start with um, the nitrogen right here. There's one of them. There are three hydrogens. And I'm gonna keep going. My iodines, there are two. Let's move to the other side. Remember, we wanna ultimately end up having each side have the same number of, of each elements. Not the same coefficients, but the same number um, of the elements. Okay. I've got two nitrogens over here. I've got six iodines and I've got two hydrogens. It really doesn't matter where you start, but one place I like to start is with, um, if I ever have situations where there's a three and a two together, I like starting there because um, I know that I'm gonna have to make a total of six and I just find it easy, but you can start wherever you want. I'm gonna start with the hydrogens just because I know that I need to make them um, equal out to six over here. And that's because um, three times two is equal to six and also two times three is equal to six. So I like starting there, but it doesn't really matter as long as you can get there. So three, I just multiplied that by two to equal six. Did this change something else? Yes, it did. Okay, so when I, when I put a coefficient there, it goes to everything. So that two also went to the nitrogen. We had one nitrogen before, but now we have two. Okay, let's finish this balance. I'm gonna go to the other side. Because once again, I want it to be six. Right now I have two. What do I need to multiply that two by in order to get six? It's three. Another common mistake I see students make is that sometimes they'll try and add Coefficients don't add, they always multiply, okay? So I already wrote down that six. It did not affect anything else. And so it looks like my iodines are the last thing I need to balance. On this side, I have six. On this side, I have two. In order to make them both the same number, I don't actually have to do anything to this one because I can multiply two times three, and that will give me six. So if I put a coefficient of three right there, three times two is equal to six. So you can check off and make sure all your little spots are filled up. Whenever you notice a blank one, like I am right now, it's probably because you forgot a one. So if I update my totals, it's like that. So. It's not that the coefficients need to be the same, it's this second column of numbers. It's the second column of numbers. See how these are always gonna be the same? It's not gonna be the coefficients, but the second column. And that's the column where we're counting out the total, okay? That's the column that you want everything to be the same. If you like doing the ping pong or the table method. Um, and a lot of students do. Um, so I'm gonna show you Sorry, thirsty. 
this next problem. Did someone else? Okay. Okay, I'm going to show you this next problem. And first thing we want to do is take a look and figure out what's going on here. We've got sodium by itself, then iodine, and then poof, the reaction happens and they combined. That is called a synthesis reaction. Synthesis. Is that the first synthesis one we've had on? Oh, we've had one other synthesis. We've had no decomposition though. Okay, so this is a synthesis and I just wanna make them equal. So I'm gonna draw my little table and write out what I have. I've got sodium, iodine, sodium, and iodine. And now I'm gonna count. I'm gonna look at what I have on the left and right. The sodiums, I've got one. My iodines, I have two. And on the other side, my sodiums, I have one. And my iodines, I also just have one. There's only one spot where these aren't equal and we can make them equal very easily. It is not a big deal at all to make them equal. All we have to do is put in our coefficient. So I'm gonna put in a coefficient right here because one times two is two and two times one, understood one, is two. So I'm gonna update my totals there. Now for my iodines, I have two, but coefficients go to everything. So I also now have two sodiums. Okay, whoops, looks like I have to balance this other sodium, right? That happens sometimes. When I, in order to balance that iodine, I'm now gonna have to go back and balance the sodium because now we have two sodiums on the product side. No big deal, just pop in a two. Okay, so my final columns, now that I put that one there, I've got, remember, it's the second column where they all need to match, two, 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 and two. So it's balanced, not the coefficients. The coefficients don't need to be the same, it's the totals. All right, great. Let's have some like test style questions. It says, a student tests a material's malleability, melting point, and color. All of these properties are examples of, uh-oh, it's that intensive, extensive, everybody hates this. Um, all right, so. Malleability, that means can you hit it with a hammer, melting points, and color. These are all physical properties. So I'm gonna cross off chemical and not enough information. Now we need to decide if it's intensive versus extensive. So here's how we remember, or here's how I always remember. Um, if it's extensive, you wanna think of will extras matter? Um, let's see. Got a bunch of paper clips here. I'll show you. Okay, here's my a bunch of paper clips. They are um, all silver. I can describe them as that. They are all malleable, so I can bend it. Um, and they all are going to melt at the same point. So that isn't affecting any of those kind of char characteristics. What does change is the weight. The weight of a single paper clip is different than all the paper clips. Another thing that would change is like the length, the length of a single paper clip versus if I put them all in like a line or something like the volume, the amount of space they take up. This will depend on the amount you have. So with extensive properties, extra amounts matter, okay? With intensive, it's independent of amount. So things like the color, it's not gonna matter if I have one or 15, right? That is um, independent of the amount. So here we go. So extensive, extras matter. None of these are extensive. So I'm 
crossing that one out. It's not extensive. Things like the good example of extensive is just something like weight, height, volume. None of these are that. They are all independent of the amount. So hopefully that helps with the intensive versus extensive. Students struggle with that every single year. Okay. Next one says, circle all the chemical changes and underline the physical changes. So I'm gonna circle the chemical changes. So we'll just go bit by bit. Melting, that is not a chemical change. You can put ice, uh, ice cubes out and it will melt and it has not changed. Whoop. So melting is a physical change. Same with bending. Combusting, that is a chemical change. If something combusts, it's not on, um, gonna be the same as it was at an atomic level. Cutting, that doesn't change the atoms at all. That's a physical change. Evaporating is just like melting. It's just a phase change. Burning something will change it. If I lit this piece of paper on fire and I got the little pile of ashes, it's gonna have a very different um, atomic makeup than it did before. Corroding, this is also a chemical change. That's like what acid does, it eats away. Sublimating, students always wanna tell me that this is a um, chemical change, but it is actually a physical change. Sublimating is just a state change, just like ice can melt. When something sublimates, that's what happens with dry ice. So the whole reason we call it dry ice is because it skips the phase change where it melts. That's called sublimation. Impress your parents with that word, sublimate. That's a phase change. Phase changes are always physical. Rusting, that's a chemical change. And reacting, something reacts. It's probably a chemical reaction. Here's a little review, because this is going to be on this test, because there's Old stuff on this next test. What is the name of CaCl2? So we wanna look at the metal. The metal is the key. The first one is always, if you see a metal, then you know it is going to use the ionic naming system. Calcium is a metal. That means we do not wanna put prefixes in the name. So no di, tri, none of that. So, I'm gonna eliminate dichloride, that's not right. Now we have some choices here. Roman numeral, wait a minute. Only the stuff that's a transition metal gets the Roman numeral. Calcium is not a transition metal, it's not in that pink area. So I'm gonna cross out the Roman numeral. Nope, garbage. So and then our last choices are between chloride and chlorate. Chlorate is a polyatomic ion. And that's not what we have here. There is no ClO3, okay? That's not in here. So I'm gonna pick B. Okay, once again, if you look at that very first one, you wanna check like on this next question, if you have a metal up first, because if you do, it's ionic. So I'm gonna look, hmm, is chlorine a metal? No, it is not. It's a non-metal, so I do want to use the prefixes. So the prefix for two is di. The prefix for five is pent. So this one is dichlorine pentoxide. No Roman numeral, that's for ionic. This doesn't even make sense at all. Cross that one out. Chlorine oxide, nope. We need those prefixes. Okay, next one, super easy. This has a skeleton equation. First part says, list all the reactants. So the reactants are what you put in to make a reaction, right? The reactants are always on the left. So in this case, my reactants are calcium and HCl. You don't need to worry about the little S's and AQs. That's just, it stands for um, solid 
or liquid or gas, and we don't really need to worry about that quite yet. We'll get there. The products are always all on the other side of the arrow. Think about it like the ingredients you put into the oven. The product is like your cake, right? So my products are, um, let me use the skinny up here, CA, CL2, and H2. What type of reaction is this? And this is going down to, we want to classify it. Is it single replacement, um, double replacement, um, synthesis, all those. Here's my hint. Something ended up alone. It's hydrogen. Hydrogen is all by itself. So whenever you see something that originally was paired up and then gets kicked out and ends up alone, that's a single replacement reaction. Okay. Last one. What additional product balances this reaction? So here we just kind of have to put your um, like your thinking cap on, your best best knowledge. So we have iron and sulfur and hydrogen and bromine. And at the end, we end up having iron plus bromine. We need to account for everything else that, that should be there, okay? Because if it's on the left side, it also has to be on the right side. So I just kind of will cross things off. This is how I would handle this, right? I would look iron, iron, sulfur. Oh, I don't see a sulfur over here. So it's gonna be a sulfur somewhere. I'll just write that down. Hydrogen. Do I see a hydrogen on the other side? Nope. So it's gonna have to be something with S and H in the name, okay? Um, so the bromine and bromine. Now we we can eliminate a couple options, right? Okay, now we just wanna pick which one. Now it's a little tricky because usually you always write the metal first, but in this case, Hydrogen, because of where it's placed on the periodic table, it's placed with the metals. So we're always going to write the hydrogens first because it acts like it's a metal. That means I'm going to pick choice A. So I chose that because of the way it would balance it and the fact that the hydrogen is going to be written first when they bond together. Okay. That's it. Came to the end there. Um, just for those of y'all who came in a little bit later, please make sure you are keeping up with everything because look, here we are today. This is, this is today. We only have two more days of learning and then reviewing and then your nine weeks test and then basically finals. So the end of the semester is really, really, really coming up on us quick. Make sure you're not missing work. Make sure you take advantage of um, that extra credit projects on Canvas. Um, which I can show you all that again. Let's see. There's that extra credit lab. Um, and that is, you can find that again on Canvas, all the information in the module, extra credit DIY labs. And there's a whole bunch of them. Each one is worth 10 points added onto your major grades. That could be a huge, huge, huge benefit for you. Um, please ask if you have more questions about that. Does anyone have any other questions for today? Hmm. And this was a long one. Um, so thank y'all for sticking with me. No questions. Okay. Have a wonderful day and thank you for coming. I'm going to give you all um, 10 extra points for coming today. I have y all your names. So I'll add that onto your um, daily grade for today's work. Have a wonderful day. Bye.